Hi everyone, this is Syrian Girl. Syria has been attacked by the US-Israeli-French alliance. Missiles struck the T4 military base, a base that is crucial to the fight against ISIS. This comes right after a false flag chemical attack in the suburb of Douma in Ghouta, Damascus. The neocons are blaming the Syrian government for the chemical attack, but once again, there is no motive because Assad was winning. After seven years of war, Ghouta is almost completely liberated from Al-Qaeda-linked rebels. Thousands of civilians have evacuated the city. For years, the rebels weren't allowing them to leave because they were using them as human shields. Most rebel groups in Ghouta surrendered, but one rebel group called the Army of Islam, which controls Duma, refused. This is because they believed that they had leverage in the form of civilian hostages that they kidnapped from a nearby pro-Assad Alawite town called Adra. They were taken by Sunni rebels last August. The Army of Islam, one of the groups the US listed as moderate, kidnapped men, women and children. They put them in cages and paraded them around the city of Douma, saying that if Assad bombs the rebels, the hostages would die. They were literally using them as human shields. A few weeks ago, they released footage of these hostages walking through an underground tunnel in Douma, injured and distressed. Since these civilians were from a pro-Assad Alawite town, the rebels thought that they had more value as human shields than the civilians of Douma. But the war continued, and it looked like the Army of Islam were about to surrender. But suddenly, they stalled negotiations and rained hundreds of missiles down on Damascus city center. You see, some of their members didn't want to surrender. This was when the false flag chemical attack happened. It's obvious the people, the children, that were killed in the gas attack were the hostages that the rebels had kidnapped. Footage of four children suffocated in an underground bunker emerged. A wood-burning oven right behind them was producing carbon monoxide. The rebels also released footage of perfectly healthy kids being drugged and hosed down. Some of the hostages have been rescued. Among them is Judy. She was abducted four years ago when she was only eight months old. How many children just like her didn't make it and were gassed by the rebels in a false flag attack? And just look at the timing. A week prior to this attack, Trump said he would pull troops out of Syria. Now he's saying he's going to attack Assad. It's the exact repeat of last year's scenario. The chemical attack that occurred in Idlib on the 4th of April in 2017 occurred almost a year to the day of this attack. And a week prior to that attack, the US said regime change was no longer the objective in Syria. And afterwards, Trump attacked Syria. Also, a day prior to the chemical attack, Israeli President Netanyahu called Trump and told him that he wasn't allowed to pull out of Syria. It's obvious who benefits. It's not the US soldiers that recently died in North Syria. This chemical attack is the excuse that Israel and the neocons need to keep the US troops in Syria indefinitely and have a causes belly for World War II. We heard a roar, and then there was dust everywhere. I grabbed my daughters, trying to cover them with my body. We lost Anvar. I went out to find him and saw him in the corridor. There was a pool of blood coming from his head. Several days ago, a rocket landed in front of my house. My mum, wife and three children died. I remember how I called home. No one picked up.
Some people died, a young lady and a little girl, and two teenagers also died. Sorry, the National Defense Forces, and um, they spoke at length about how the village has been pummeled by missiles um, from terrorists um, in the outskirts of Maharde, just a few kilometers away. And it's been on a daily basis over the past many years. Um, and uh, they, they've said, you know, they've been suffering, nobody is talking about it, and they're looking forward to the liberation of Idlib because it will ease their suffering. It will, it will mean the cessation of these terrorist attacks on Idlib. The NDF commander told me that um, 117 civilians in this small town have been killed by such attacks over the years, and 52 additional Syrian soldiers have been killed. Um, and of course then on September 7th there was a major attack. Um, terrorists fired um, nine Grad missiles, I was told, six of which, which were um, uh, fitted with cluster munitions, um, and they fired them at this village, killing uh, 11 people and injuring 20, some of whom were critically injured. Um, so these are the kind of things that the media, which is busy talking about corporate media, which is busy talking about Idlib, are completely negating um, happening on a daily basis in Mahavde. And there's a nearby village which my colleague Vanessa Bili went to, and I'm, it's called El Escalvia, and on on September 9th, um, I believe that was the latest uh, attack by terrorist factions in which they fired, according to Mesa Bili, uh, 10 Grad missiles on this village. So it's a similar situation where these civilians mm -hmm. have been suffering uh, to the silence of the international corporate media. Sure. Uh, and I know while you were there, you spoke to people, didn't you, uh, residents there. Let's listen to an interview you did with a father who'd lost his family in a terrorist shelling. <laughs> سنين صغيرة هذا الأفادي هاي الماريا هاي شنتايد شنتايد فادي هاي شنتايد سنين هاي الأفادي هاي شنتايد ماريا While you were there, did you get a sense of how often these um, shelling attacks happen? I noticed that he was saying they happen continuously, but is it every day, every other day, Can you, or is it pretty random? Um, I would say it's more than pretty random, but maybe not every day, on a near daily basis. And uh, I, I talked to one man, he was a volunteer in a committee that uh, works to help families that have martyrs or injured people in the families. And he was saying, you know, some days they receive more than 70 shells. Um, so certainly it is a disastrous situation. Mm -hmm. And that man who I interviewed, Shadi Yusuf Shahade, he lost three, his three young children, his wife and his mother in this terrorist attack. And it wasn't the first time, by the way, that his house was hit. It was targeted twice before. And his neighborhood in general has been targeted 10 times by such attacks. What do residents say there about the looming battle then for Idlib?